The Nutcracker, written and illustrated by Susan Jeffers. Music by Peter Tchaikovsky. It was Christmas Eve at the Stahlbaum's house. Marie and her little brother Fritz were listening at the ballroom door, waiting for the party to begin. Everyone was dancing when the last guest arrived. Godfather, cried Marie, rushing back to greet him. Herr Drusselmeyer was not only Marie's godfather, but he was also a famous toy maker. He could make toys that moved and clocks that called the hours as sweetly as a nightingale. Herr Drusselmeyer brought presents for the children. He gave Fritz a box of toy soldiers. For Marie, there were two dolls, Harlequin and Columbine, who danced with each other. I have another present for you, Marie, said Herr Drusselmeyer, handing her a wooden nutcracker. I want you to take good care of him. Not fair, shouted Fritz. She has three presents. He grabbed the nutcracker from Marie and tossed him in the air. The nutcracker crashed to the floor and broke his head. So what, jeered Fritz. It was an ugly thing. Herr Drusselmeyer bound Nutcracker's head with his handkerchief. Tenderly, Marie took Nutcracker into her arms. She put him under the Christmas tree. Outside in the street, the carriages waited. After a flurry of goodbyes, Fritz and Marie were sent up to bed. But my poor Nutcracker is all alone, thought Marie. Tiptoeing back downstairs, holding Nutcracker close, she soon fell asleep. Herr Drusselmeyer slipped into the room and, raising his hand, cast a bit of magic. Bong! 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 The grandfather clock struck midnight. Marie stirred and rubbed her eyes. The Christmas tree was growing. Around her came a scampering of mice. Squeak! Squeak! They were gathering like an army to attack. Their ruler was the Mouse King who had seven heads and seven crowns. Marie held Nutcracker and ran as fast as she could. Nutcracker leapt out of Marie's arms and held his sword at the ready. Fritz's toy soldiers took their battle positions. Swords flashed and cannons fired. Boom! Boom! Squeak! Squeak! Nutcracker fought bravely, but the Mouse King was stronger. No! cried Marie. You shall not hurt him. She pulled off her slipper and threw it with all her might at the Mouse King. With a hiss, the Mouse King sank to the floor. Gathering up their king, the mice dragged him away. From the shadows, Herr Drusselmeyer saw Marie's bravery. He raised his hand, and Nutcracker was transformed into a handsome prince. The prince bowed to Marie and placed the Mouse King's sparkling crown upon her head. Come, said the prince. They walked through falling snowflakes to a waiting boat that flew them through the night. Welcome to my kingdom, said the prince. But where are we, asked Marie. You are in the land of the sweets, said the sugar plum fairy, coming through the gates of the kingdom. Welcome home, dear prince. We will have a party to celebrate your return. The sugar plum fairy led the prince and Marie to the seat of honor. Coffee, chocolate, Chinese tea, marzipan, and mother ginger and her polchinellas danced for them. Pink roses waltzed. At last, the sugar plum fairy danced. She seemed lighter than air. Too soon, it was time to leave. As they flew homeward, Marie asked the prince, will I ever see you again? The prince replied, one day your courage and kind heart will be rewarded. Do not forget me. What are you doing under the tree, Marie? Said her mother the next morning. Wake up, said Herr Drusselmeyer. Marie opened her eyes and hugged her nutcracker. She whispered, if only you were alive, I would not care if Fritz said you were ugly. I would love you anyway. Herr Drusselmeyer raised his hand and the nutcracker again became the prince of fairyland. The prince said to Marie, the mouse king imprisoned me under an evil spell, but because you love me no matter what I look like, his spell is broken. I've been returned to my true form. Years passed and the prince and Marie became engaged. After their wedding, they rode to the land of the sweets in a coach trimmed in gold drawn by four silver horses. To this day, there are those who say Marie is the queen of a wondrous fairyland that only those who believe can see.